In this video, I will show you how to get ChatGPT to explain concepts in mathematics to you. So let's begin with the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder has a formula that is relatively simple, but it's always hard to remember all these formulas for volume and area and so on. Certainly the volume of a cylinder has pi and radius and height and who knows what else is in there. Okay, so I give ChatGPT multiple instructions here for the kind of response that I'm looking for. So how to calculate the volume of a cylinder, explain it assuming that I am a high school student, and also provide a work example problem. Very nice. So we get the formula volume equals pi r squared times h, and now ChatGPT defines these terms. So pi is the constant, blah, blah, blah. R is the radius of the base of the cylinder, and h is the height of a cylinder. So then we get uh, an explanation, which just says that we multiply them together. And here we get a worked example. So imagine we have a cylinder with a radius of three centimeters and a height of 10. We apply the formula to get a volume of 90 pi centimeters cubed. So this is a pretty interesting uh, example because ChatGPT is solving it analytically. So this is the like the real analytic solution because pi is not something that you can express in a finite number of numbers. It's an irrational number. So this is like the pure math answer. And then uh, ChatGPT is approximating it. It's saying we can use 3.14159 as an approximation for pi. And then we get that the volume is approximately 283.53. Now, these kinds of answers are really fascinating to me because I did not specify this to ChatGPT. It decided on its own to uh, use an approximation of pi out to five digits after the decimal point and to approximate uh, the volume to two significant digits after the decimal point. Now, if you're currently in a math class, or if you think back to when you were in a math class, you probably have memories, maybe nightmares, of your math teachers telling you, don't focus on memorization, focus on understanding. I'm sorry to say that is terrible advice. When you are a math teacher, you've been teaching math concepts for years, maybe even decades. Of course, you don't need to memorize everything, you just understand it. It's all so familiar because of so much repetition, you've taught the concept so many times, year in and year out. But when you're a student and you're encountering this stuff for the first time, the reality is that you do end up having to memorize a lot of things. So be prepared to uh, just find some tricks to memorize formulas. So how can we memorize this formula for volume? Let's ask ChatGPT for some advice. So that formula, I'll notice I'm not specifying what that refers to, but ChatGPT will figure out that by that, I am referring to this formula. It's hard to remember, do you have any tips or mnemonics? Mnemonic is like a, a trick for, uh, for memory, something to help you remember something to help me memorize that formula. Let's see what ChatGPT offers. Okay, so I'm simultaneously a little disappointed in ChatGPT's response, but also very happy with its response. Uh, the disappointment comes from uh, that ChatGPT didn't really give a mnemonic or a, a tip or a trick for memorizing the formula. It kind of did here for memorizing part of it, and I'll get to that in a moment. But I am quite pleased with ChatGPT's response because what it did is explain the formula in different ways with a uh, more explanation. So I think this response here will actually help us, and also these responses, will help us remember the formula more. In fact, in the last paragraph here, ChatGPT says, uh, try memorizing it in parts. So first, remember that the volume of a shape has something to do with the area of the base and the height. And then you have to remember that uh, the base of a cylinder is a circle, and the area of the circle is uh, pi r squared. So, you know, it's I don't know if that really helps you memorize the formula, but it might help you understand the formula. Okay, so we do get a tip for our little mnemonic trick here, and it's pi r squared. No, pies are round. Cakes are squared. <laughs> I, I, the cakes can also be round, I guess, but 
Anyway, you know, admittedly, it's silly, but it can help you remember that pi r squared is about circles. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to read this whole explanation. Uh, I will scroll, scroll through it um, slowly. So if you would like to pause the video and read ChatGPT's full output, then you're welcome to. And, you know, I think I'm going to ask again. I'm going to ask for an analogy that can help me learn or memorize that formula. Now, it's possible that ChatGPT will generate a really great uh, analogy. It's already coming up with something about pancakes, which I've never seen it do before. But also, as I've mentioned before, sometimes just seeing the same concept explained multiple times in different ways, using different language, different levels of explanation, different voices, that alone can help you remember the concept. So even if we don't get a really brilliant analogy, just seeing it again is, I think, going to be helpful for you. So ChatGPT is suggesting to think of a cylinder as a stack of very thin pancakes, and each pancake represents a small uh, slice of the cylinder, and each pancake is given by pi r squared and so on. Okay, I, I, you know, that's okay if you're hungry, if it's breakfast time. Um, another time I've asked ChatGPT about this, uh, it told me to think about coins. So think about stacking up coins on top of each other. And so, I'm, I, you know, if these are useful for you, then that's great. Okay, so next I want to keep working with this cylinder and the volume formula. It's one thing to read about it and to look at uh, some equations, but we also need to work through some examples ourselves in order to get some more experience. So now I ask ChatGPT, please provide an example problem, but don't give me the solution. I'm going to try to solve it on my own, and then I will tell you my answer. So we are asking ChatGPT specifically for a problem without telling us the answer to it. So the example problem specifies that the cylinder has a height of 15 centimeters and the diameter uh, is uh, 10 centimeters. Okay, so I am going to pause the recording and compute this on my own. And I encourage you also to pause the video and to unpause the video when you have an approximate solution. Okay, how'd you do? This was actually tricky. And I didn't even realize that ChatGPT threw a wrench into the works here until I, I sat down to work out this problem. So ChatGPT actually told us the diameter of the base of the cylinder, but of course the formula is based on the radius. So in fact, the correct answer is obtained as pi times five squared, not 10 squared, but five squared times 15. But here's what I did. I intentionally made a mistake. So I multiplied by 10 instead of by five. So this is not the correct answer. This is twice the correct answer. I'm putting in something that is incorrect, and I'm curious to see whether ChatGPT will be able to recognize that this is the incorrect answer. Remember that ChatGPT is not a numerical processing software. It is not trained to be a mathematician. It's not trained to do math. So let's see how it does. Okay, this is a really great answer from ChatGPT. It also made me realize that uh, even what I explained to you that I did wrong, I still did it wrong. Uh, I was so, uh, you know, when I paused the recording and I went to work through it, I was so excited about uh, the fact that I was going to tell ChatGPT the wrong answer that I still applied the formula wrong because uh, I didn't square this. So you should square the radius. Um, I meant to square the diameter, but I didn't even do that. So this number is completely wrong. It's also wrong, which is something that I admit that I didn't even think about. Uh, but I realized after seeing ChatGPT's answer, I did not include units here. I should have included units that this was 471 cubic centimeters. So uh, I am not ashamed to admit that I was wrong on multiple levels. <laughs> Although I was only trying to be a tiny bit wrong, I ended up being more wrong. Okay, so ChatGPT says that's close, but not quite correct. This is a really important reply. I'm going to discuss this more in, um, I forget if it's the next section, but it's in a few sections about um, using ChatGPT to find errors in your mathematical reasoning and in your answers. ChatGPT is not guaranteed to know how to do math, but in this case, it correctly identified that I made a mistake. 
Okay, so um, ChatGPT explains that if the diameter is 10 centimeters, then the radius is five. And then here it just goes through the math and tells us how to, uh, to uh, work through the math with the numbers. And it says we can approximate it as uh, 1171. And then finally, ChatGPT says, in these calculations, it's important to keep track of, of units. And so your answer should actually contain units like cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed. So I'm embarrassed to say plus one for ChatGPT, minus one for Mike over here. All right. There's one more thing I want to uh, do in this video to extend this uh, demo and just to tell you a little bit more about working with math, but also working with ChatGPT. One of the interesting things about mathematics uh, and equations and formulas, uh, which will allow you to explore and understand concepts in math and will also help you uh, learn math better, is to solve for different things in an equation. So here, this equation is solved for volume. So V is, on, is isolated on the left-hand side. Everything else is together on the right-hand side. Now, we can also manipulate this equation. We could solve for pi, actually. We could come up with an alternative definition of pi using the formula for a cylinder. Now, of course, you, you're going to get some cancellations and so on. So nothing earth-shatteringly new here that we are discovering. But, you know, we could also solve for, for example, the radius. Okay, so that leads me to my next prompt here. So here I write, so we could manipulate this equation. Now, I'm not saying which equation I'm referring to, but as you know, ChatGPT will infer uh, that we are that I am referring to the volume formula. So I could uh, manipulate the equation to solve for R. So if you tell me the volume and the height of a cylinder, I can compute its radius as the square root of volume divided by pi times height. So this is just me explaining how I'm manipulating the equation. Is my thinking correct? Please correct me if I'm wrong. And then give me an example problem where I can work through it without telling me the answer. Okay, let's see what ChatGPT can do for us. Okay, so ChatGPT confirms that my thinking is correct. Uh, and it also writes down the formula here, which is just a repeat of uh, what I wrote. And here's the problem with no answer. Um, if we have a cylindrical can that has a volume of 1,000 cubic centimeters and a height of 25 centimeters, what is the radius of the can? Okay, I'm also going to um, pause the recording and solve this, and I encourage you to pause the video, solve this yourself, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so I used a calculator, and I got approximately 3.56 centimeters as the radius. Great job, Mike. Your answer is correct. Okay, now it's going through uh, even more. It's, uh, I don't think I need all of this explanation here. Maybe I'll even stop generating just to show you that you can use that button whenever you feel like it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We had a really nice, productive back and forth with ChatGPT that was all focused on helping us understand and apply the formula for a volume of a cylinder.